Okay, I'll try and make this quick because I've only got about 25 seconds of battery because um, obviously I've had a few power issues today. Um, I actually had this solar installation done about three months ago um, through Solar Labs Australia. Um, it's actually been a really, really nice install. They've done a seriously good job and I'd say both the techs at Solar Labs and Tesla, everyone has really cooperated well. Um, the only predicament I guess throughout this whole process is just taking it out to the group to see what experiences other people have had because whilst I am being accommodating and waiting for the install to be resolved, um, like, yes, sorry, it was installed two, three months ago, um, but we've obviously had some issues trying to have all the power walls installed. Um, this is by no means just a defamation on Tesla's behalf at all. Um, I'm happy to cooperate throughout this whole process. Um, the only concern I have is simply that it was 10 power walls that was advertised, but unfortunately we're struggling to get six reliably on um, we actually had six working fine for six uh, sorry for, for one month but the problem we then had was today we had solar labs come out because we needed to have our neuro media installed we actually had it installed a month ago our system was really unstable back then we had to keep changing around different firmware versions um all our cabling was inspected everything was fine tesla was confirming that it was in relation to the can bus sorry to everyone who heard me say can bus um i'm not too familiar i'm not a tech i'm a customer um so yeah uh, at that point in time we managed to get everything up and running and stable um, but we didn't have the neurio meter uh, that was still in the post being sent out to us from tesla um, by the time it came in, we installed it and we installed it at night time. We didn't have any solar, so we didn't realise no reading was coming through. Well, we knew no reading was coming through. It was night time, we had no solar. But on the subsequent day, no reading was still coming through. Um, but the system was nice and stable. Um, it had been stable for a long time. So we were happy with it as is. And we thought that we only had, at that point in time, six power walls running out of 10. Um, we thought we'll just wait till Tesla's confident in the next patch. When we get the 10 power walls, we'll get the new rear meter. Now, I think maybe maybe three to four weeks had passed. Tesla had advised us they still weren't ready with the patch. Um, we thought initially it may have only taken one to two weeks um, based on initial conversations. Um, maybe we misunderstood. Um, but then when we found out that, you know, four weeks on, it still might take another four weeks and they had no ET, like no actual time they could commit to, um, we thought, look, let's try and get the new rear meter working. So we had Solar Lab come out today um, at around 1 p.m. and we had the new rear meter have a lot of troubles actually connecting to our gateway. Um, so we couldn't connect via Wi-Fi and we also couldn't connect the new rear meter directly through the, the comlink cable straight into the gateway. Um, and we couldn't work it out for every hour and a half. We went through first level tech support with Tesla, second level, and then eventually got to the point that we found out through second level support that um, the firmware we currently had running on our gateway wasn't compatible with the Nuria meter. Um, they suggested it on the phone today, look, we need to update your firmware, get you to a more recent release, um, which is confusing because we only just updated our firmware a month ago. Um, I'm not entirely sure across everything here. We went, I believe, from 20.49, which was running stable, to today, I'd have to get the number but it was in the 21 point something region um, and that was supposed to help the connection to the Nurio meter. Uh, the predicament we then had and we were asking them, Solar Lab was, uh, was saying on the phone to each, we spoke to three different techs um, to try and confirm this uh, if, and these are the techs that we also spoke to from the beginning. Um, we managed to get up to you know whatever level two, level three, higher level support that have been with us along the way. Um, initially we would just spoke to level one because we didn't think it was a complicated issue, but yes, it, it just, it wasn't working. So level two, level three got involved and they said, look, the firmware will be fine. We pushed it out today. Um, actually they tried to do it at about 4 PM today. Uh, and they were advised now we're having comms issues with our gateway. They couldn't actually get the firmware to work. So we we're going to defer it to the next day. Um, solar lab went home, Tesla went home. Surprisingly enough, even though Tesla advised at 4 PM, they couldn't get the firmware out to us at 6 PM the system turned off and at this point in time it actually updated the system um no one was there at T tesla no one was here from solar Labs, so my whole system went off at 6 p.m um and me and my family were like getting the kids ready um bars you know you know kids are here they're everywhere we've got three little girls under the age of 10 um one thing a two-year-old so it can be a little bit challenging when it goes pitch black um you know and, and here in australia we're still we're still coming out of winter so it, it literally is pitch black at 6 p.m um so we, we called up Solar Lab, and at the same time, I was trying to boot the system up. I looked into the local IP address through my Wi-Fi, 192.168.1.137, um, and I could see that we, in the new interface, it said that we had this on-grid button and a stop-start system. Um, I couldn't restart anything. Um, I'd click it, I'd start it again. Um, nothing was getting it online. Um, went through the installer process with Solar Lab because um, it came out really quickly, and 
Uh, unfortunately, when we went through the installer process, the, we had to update each of the power walls. It was coming up with comms issues on the power walls. Um, and we went through that whole process, updated them, and it was working for, for, for 20 minutes. Um, and then all of a sudden, after about 20 minutes, it just went absolutely chaotic. We had power cycling happening um, 30 times in a minute, like really quick. Um, I, was, I had to sort of run out to turn off the distribution board to all of our you know, premises, I've got business premises, PCs, hard drives, a whole bunch of different equipment that doesn't exactly appreciate when you're power cycling. Um, it's it's very easy to wipe my external drives um, if, if you power cycle them that quick. I wouldn't necessarily say wipe, but you know, corrupt the header records in the hard drives. Um, so yeah, uh, then we probably had problems for at least a couple of hours. We had Tesla on the phone. We had to do some more um, modifications, literally going back to, to bare bones, um, uninstalling absolutely everything, uh, re resyncing up neurometer, resyncing up the power walls, like removing everything, re-adding it back. And that got us online for two hours. Um, Solar Labs was here till about 10 p.m. Um, just monitoring. And just as they were walking out the door, uh, we had a power outage again. Um, so we had six power, uh, power walls. And we've had them on for the last month or so. But since the firmware updates today, things have just gotten absolutely chaotic. Um, so what we decided, rather than reconnecting us back to the grid, because we are an off-grid setup, um, we've just gone down to two batteries. We do find that the less batteries you have, the highest ability you tend to have. Um, and once again, it seems to be due to some sort of networking issue through the CAN bus. Um, from my experience in software, it's I probably understand that, you know, you have your bandwidth limitations on cables. So, you know, if they can only transfer, for example, one megabyte per second and your software comms, uh, however it's been coded, is trying to utilize one megabyte per second or more. And if it doesn't have that bandwidth available to it, it starts dropping data. Um, it could potentially, I'm guessing here, maybe some of the power walls aren't receiving load information. Um, so I'll actually flick over to another screen. Uh, so what you can see here um, is we have our time signature. Now this is coming from a Python API that I'm sorry, coming from a Python Python script that's connecting through a Tesla Powerwall API. Um, it's polling information as quickly as a thousand times a second, um, depending on how much it's allowing me to get through the, the local Ethernet connection. I sort of tapered it back to maybe 50 times a second of a late just to make sure I'm not overlaying the gateway. But all the issues that I've been experiencing have been occurring prior to this Python script. I just put this in as a, as a measure of logging to try and get some further insights because Tesla advised me that weren't getting you know any more information than one a second so here i can collect a whole bunch of information whether it's megahertz um different aspects in regards to the gateway and how it's reacting to loads but simplistically i've just pulled out the wattage information for now so obviously at night time we're not producing any wattage so our inverters are for whatever reason it's negative i'm assuming it's because the inverters themselves are probably draining some power so a little bit from the gateway is going out to them guessing yet um but there's house load this is in wattage so you can see at this microseconds uh, this is 2 a.m. Uh, 2 in the morning, so 2 a.m., 23 minutes, 32 seconds, and then these are the thousandth of a second. So you can see from literally 2332 to 2333, thousandth of a second, um, we had this micro change. We had an increase of 300 watts. This is tiny. This is like turning on lights. You could turn on a kettle and you'd get a 2000 watt increase straight away. And I can see that throughout my data. That hasn't been a problem. However, what is quite odd is you see our battery discharge and how it sort of aligns. I don't know what the thresholds are here, what you should expect, but they do. The, the battery discharge information that's coming from the API to me is rounded into tens for whatever reason. But nonetheless, um, it's quite on par with the house load that is being reported or the business plus house load effectively. This is just the load of the whole system in essence. Um, when we get down to row 13, this is where it looks a little bit interesting. So we had the 300 watt load increase that's being demanded by the property um, or all of our equipment. And then all of a sudden we have this battery discharge spike. Um, I haven't previously seen this unless it's around an issue. So we had a spike and then we've had a negative. So at this point in time, and this is when we actually witnessed the outage, um, as soon as I had the problem, uh, I went here. The reason our API still works is because I have a UPS set up on my network and I've also got a UPS set up on some of my laptops. So I can have this API running even though we have an outage and it sends us data. The Tesla gateway itself still manages to run whenever there's this outage, it stays live and keeps feeding data. So the, I don't know how that works, but it works. Um, also, just going on to the notion of some people made comments, are you sure you're supposed to have 10 power walls? Um, look, whether 10 power walls is going to work or not, um, both Solar Lab, myself, were aware that Tesla were advertising 10 power walls as per this. Um, 
up to 10 power walls. And we also had design sessions and architecture sessions and had sign offs from Tesla tech stating that, yes, this system will go ahead. This is the configuration that you can use. This is how you do it. And this is now where I'll go and find my little roaming cam and see if I can show you the install and possibly just show you the struggles I'm having to go through to try and keep my equipment online. Um, just find this. So, um, because of all the power outages, I've had to divert a lot of power from sensitive equipment and excuse the mess. Um, I've only been moving to this property and my business area is very messy. I'm very OCD and this does my head in. I love things being in order. Um, built this space up here to try and get rid of tools, but I just, I just need more, more time. And at the moment, my first priority is trying to get this power working. Now we've had to get a grid install reinstalled. So this is just going out to our street, just these outlets here. Um, I've got power monitoring on each of them to make sure I'm not overloading them. Um, they're having to go out to different servers or cryptocurrency or whatever appliances. Um, I've got these cables running here, there, everywhere, um, all throughout my premise. Um, this is to pull our system offline because this is an off-grid system inherently um, or in its design and it was supposed to meet all of our power needs but once again I'm having to whip out all these cables. Um, now just to go out to my power wall installation area this is in between residential property and business location. Um, it's 1am here so I can't talk too loudly. Um, this is a really nice install. Excuse the mess out here as well. I'm just working on some tables. Um, so solar labs have spent a lot of tender love and care on this install. Um, as you can see there's no wires exposed, no conduit. It's all behind aluminium sheeting. They've got a center track here that has been screwed in. Um, we've also got a side panel coming in here so it means they can access the cabling if they ever need to which is going to be very unlikely. Um, all the power walls have had their cabling fed in through the back through this center channel similarly up to the inverters and then you can also see over here at the end where our install might be considered different to others from what I gather is because we have a 200 amp installation, this is 200 volt, 240 volts Australian, 200 amp, amp installation here is similar to in America, I believe to a 400 amp. Now the Tesla gateway in Australia is not supposed to take more than hundred amps from what I gather, but because we've got a distribution board set up and it hasn't been finished yet, we're printing out labels, it's all locked off, but, um, yeah, we just need to get the labels and everything installed. Um, but essentially, we have all of our inverters going into here and out to the batteries and various information going up to the gateway. Look, I'm not an electrician. I'd have to have one of those guys explain it better. Um, this is our Nureo meter down here, which is you know, supposed to be tracking our solar input. Um, we don't have to put on any CT clamps on anything else because they're supposed to be captured through the Tesla gateway, monitoring the discharge and the charging of the batteries themselves. So solar discharge and discharge is enough for us because we don't have um, any connection to the grid. So it's an off-grid setup. Um, I am super happy with the install, super happy with Solar Lab. I'm once again happy with Tesla. It's just a matter of the techs at Tesla are working overdrive trying to fix this issue but I can relate to them. Also, you know, being a tech in software development, it's sort of like you've got a sales marketing team potentially that have oversold a product that is what they're having to under deliver because they're not ready. Um, I don't think they should be advertising 10 power walls if our installation has taken over two months and we're still struggling to get past six. And now we've actually had to go back to two power walls to hope for stability over tonight. They solar lab were offering to connect us to the grid um, for everything tonight but I said look if we do that it's actually going to rewire everything and it's going to set us back it means Tesla's going to struggle to work on our off-grid system because it's going to all of a sudden be an on-grid system and they would have to rewire a whole bunch of our distribution board and bring in cables so um, I didn't want to do that um, even though it was offered for free I'm just trying to stick it out we're testing two batteries alone and we'll see if we can just lower our load um, which reminds me we are now on 50% um, it's 1am in the morning nearly um, I'd better lower some loads to just get through the night and get through to tomorrow. Um, we have a 70 kilowatt array of panels across our business and residential premise that all feed through to that central distribution um, and charging battery bay that you just saw just then. Um, super, super good setup. Just trying to get through to this next stage and work out, you know, where do we go from here? Um, I just wanted to put this post out there just to see what other people were thinking because... 
yeah, once again, this, this doesn't sound like it's going to be resolved within the next one to four weeks. I feel like it's going to be months. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And the problem is we are sort of guinea pigs in a sense. I know they're testing things, but they were confident today in the software releases that were going into our system to allow a new emitter to work. And you can see where we got to. We've had outages all night. Um, all day and now questionable right now as to where we're going to be. Um, but anyway, look, I better get back to it. I've got some work to get on with. I don't know if I said before, but I'm supposed to, I was supposed to have staff here tonight and they couldn't get here because of power outages. Now I'm going to try and crack on with that, um, work through to the morning. You know, these are the kind of costs that I don't even know how Tesla could possibly reimburse. You know, presently it's just like a, I believe it's going to come down to an en energy consumption drawing from the grid sort of cost factor, but you know, what about all the other, you know, seemingly intangible items that I can't work out, you know, damaged appliances and what have you, or things that don't cope well with, you know, frequent power cycling, whether it's my hard drives or whatever. I've had corrupted hard drives, corrupt, you know, just issues here, there, everywhere. I think crypto machines going offline and not being booted up. I've had customers hosting servers here and they've not come back online because the power went out and they didn't do a safe restart and went into a, um, you know, we need to check your device for errors, you know, mode so it didn't reload, that that sort of thing. Um, but look, I better get to it. Um, I'll give you an update later. Thank you.